So let's go to the last page of the contract, which is actually not a paragraph. It's just called broker information. Well, that's not even the last page, second to last yeah. page. Broker information. And it's actually a notice. It's not part of the contract because it's after the execution and signature. Correct. This could be done and changed multiple times if it needed to, if you got that information incorrect because it's after the signatures on the contract. So if you're working on the left side here, other broker firm means you're representing the buyer only as the buyer's agent mm -hmm. um, or uh, yeah, that's all we're going to cover on that one. <laughs> you're representing the buyer as the buyer's agent. End of story. And then over here on the other side, you would fill this out for the listing broker firm. Common practice, if you have the information, go ahead and take care of it. Yeah, it's just courtesy. Yeah, it's courtesy to do that. It looks cleaner. And Don't the be agent, lazy. Yeah, and the agent on the other side is going to appreciate you. And in all reality, they're going to look at your offer stronger because you've done it. Um, now, the other time that you're going to fill out nothing on the left and everything on the right is in an intermediary situation. So if it's this office, if it's our uh, West Fort Worth office, or if it's our Johnson County office, because Kim is our broker for all three of those offices, that's gonna be an intermediary situation. Now, technically with the Texas Real Estate Commission, it's not an intermediary situation because we have three different brokerage IDs and three different brokerage entities, yet I'm gonna say best practice would be to go ahead and disclose fill and fill it out on the right side of this because it's very clear to the buyer and the, the seller that uh, you're working in the same brokerage house. So um, if you are working with the listing agent and then another KW agent from one of our three offices uh, comes and brings a buyer to you, then you're gonna fill out everything on the right side and you're also gonna fill out what? The intermediary, the intermediary, intermediary. relationship yeah. notice and you're gonna make sure that everyone signs, uh, yeah. signs that right there. Because there's additional things that uh, protect you and they protect the buyer and they protect the seller in, in that notice there. Yeah. Um, when in so, doubt, disclose. Exactly, when in doubt, disclose. And so to go back to what you were saying earlier, where if you, the MLS says two and a half percent and you execute it with 3% here and you think you pulled one over. That's cute, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Whatever's in the MLS will roll, unless no. there's additional paperwork signed. Correct, and uh, that form that you would uh, need signed is actually uh, a Texas Realtors form. form. It is not a um, Trek. Uh, TREC form because TREC has nothing to do with commissions in the state of Texas. That's right, they are there to protect the with consumer. With the exception of a farm and ranch contract mm -hmm. and we'll go into that in a whole different video. Yeah, it's a whole different, all right, and then finally, the last page of the contract, officially, this is just the receipt page. Um, you're gonna have an option fee receipt. That's to be signed by whom? The option fee is signed by the listing broker or the seller. The listing broker or the seller, and that's N it. Now let me ask or you. Or the listing agent. Can a buyer's agent take the option directly to the seller? Only with the permission of the seller, only with the permission of the buyer's, the, the seller's agent. Ex but they're doing it, so just be ready. Yeah, exactly. Uh, then earnest money receipt. This one right here, it's going to talk about the receipt of the earnest money in the form of whatever it is. Uh, most personal of the time, check, that's personal check, check, cashier's check, wiring, um, wiring, stuff like that. Um, and you know, many title companies are set up to receive things like Zelly. Some of them I've seen are set up to receive Venmo, uh, Venmo PayPal. It's uh, all kinds of stuff now. And then they're going to fill that out. And notice on here that there is a date and a time. If they only put the date on here, request that there is a time that's put on there as well. The reason being is because there's that three day period right. in which to get the option money there, a seller, theoretically has the right to back out of a contract if you didn't get the option money, or not the option money, the earnest money there in the correct amount of time. And the only way that they could do that is by providing you a notice mm -hmm. that you've not provided the earnest money and that they're terminating the contract. Uh, and the, the way that they do that is based upon the time that the earnest money was delivered. So it's important to have that on there. And then there's the contract receipt because oftentimes the contract is sent over to the title company before the earnest money That's is. Right. And then finally, last but certainly not least, if there's any additional earnest money, there's also the receipt for that as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else you want to add about the last page of the contract? No, just go write them.